Today, growers can enhance crop fertility by monitoring the plant's nutritional status and adjusting any requirements with good foliar fertilization practices. This is why tissue sampling has become so important because crop nutrient deficiencies aren't always visible. The only way to truly know if a crop is being adequately nourished to its optimal potential is to have tissue samples analyzed during the growing season in order to potentially feed the hidden hunger. At Loveland Products, we know that nutrient status plays a significant role in crop growth and yield potential. That's why we're sharing what the experts have to say to help you get growing. Tissue sampling uh, throughout the growing season has been very, very important. Uh, soil sampling we're typically doing once a year or once every three years. So with a tissue sample, we're going to try and do this maybe two or even three times through the growing season. And what that does, it allows us to get a, an idea or a snapshot of what that plant is taking up at that time. Some of these nutrients are going to have different peak demands throughout that growing season. And so consequently, with a tissue analysis, it's going to give us a heads up if we have a deficiency that we can come back in and we can make some kind of a corrective action or treatment. Some of the nutrient deficiencies that we've been seeing this year especially are going to be some of the more mobile elements, boron in particular, somewhat with sulfur and nitrogen as well. Uh, these are very leachable elements and with the higher precip it's going to move those out of the soil profile much more readily. The plants then aren't going to be able to have it available to it and so we are seeing some of that show up in some of our tissue samples and the data that we're getting back. If we're on some of the lighter sandier soils these things are going to be even exacerbated that much more. Uh, sometimes when we get into some areas where we're dealing with a lot heavier soils uh, that we might have some issues with phosphorus and potassium availability early on so we will see some of those deficiencies as well. Over the years when we had some higher input costs uh, their products like phosphorus or potassium may not have been applied at the proper amounts and so we do see some of those uh, elements show up as deficient as well. Some of the common mistakes that we run into as far as the samples that we receive it, it Sometimes they're taking the wrong part of the plant. They may take the whole plant when they might just need a particular leaf or vice versa where they're going to send in just a very small leaf and we need more plant material. So when the plants are young, we're going to want to take the entire plant. As that plant starts to grow and mature, then we're going to shift our focus to a different leaf and we're going to have them take that. One of the problems we have is when they take those samples, they put them into a plastic bag. And when it's in a plastic bag, the samples are going to get hot and then they're going to start to mold and that's going to have an impact on our data. As far as crop nutrients changing over the last decade, we aren't really seeing as many as what we thought might occur. With all the changes in the varieties and the hybrids that have occurred, uh, we really figured that some of these numbers had to change. Uh, we had established some normal values back in the, the mid-70s and a few years back we felt that we really needed to go back through and look at our values, look at our normal numbers that we're using, just because of all the changes in the genetics and the hybrids that have occurred over the last 10 years. We evaluated five years of plant data at all the different stages of growth throughout the United States so we could take away weather influences or geographical influences. And we ran the statistics on it and we really didn't see that much change in some of the numbers. We saw some of the things like potassium went down some. Uh, some of the micronutrients also went down a little bit, but overall things really didn't change that much. Having a soil sample accompanying a plant sample can be very important. There are times where a plant analysis by itself is going to be hard to interpret. So if we have a soil test that comes in with the sample, we can evaluate what those fertility levels are. And if I have a high level in the soil and a low level in the plant, then more than likely we're having a problem down here at the root level. Okay, so if the soil test is indicating these high concentrations and yet we have a deficiency, then we may change the way that we're going to go about correcting that deficiency. The soil test is also going to give us some information on things like pH. If the pH is outside of that ideal zone, then some of these nutrient levels are going to be impacted by that. Uh, we can also use that soil test to look and see if there's any antagonisms between them. If I have a high concentration of one element in the soil, that could have an impact on the availability of something else. So having the two together is very, very beneficial. As you can see, tissue sampling plays a very important role in crop production and it is highly recommended to put these agronomic practices in place to get the most out of your crops. Remember, sampling a crop during the season provides an ongoing status report of its nutrient content which can be used as a reference throughout the growing season or from year to year.